So uh, when you have like the events as industry was like down, right? Yep. I mean like no one could do anything and that was going on for like the entire year. You yeah. had to postpone even by like 18 months after. Yeah, we lost $10 million. Right. So how, as a leader, what yeah. helped you to recover uh, from a disaster like that? I'm just curious to know, like what was your mindset and what steps did you take? Well, it's funny. If you really want to talk about it, um, you know, we, did you hear the HubSpot one? Were you here for this? It's okay if you no. Yeah. Well, so Brian Halligan, co the co-founders here, I mean, HubSpot's worth almost 20 billion. Brian, right after COVID, drove, had a horrible snowmobile accident, broke every bone in his body, almost lost him. Oh, wow. And, um, and it's crazy, and you can watch the session later, it's great, I mean, he, he, he barely recovered. Um, he looked, he's great now, but it was, it was a long roll back from falling off a big cliff on a snowmobile in the dark um, and had to be airlifted out, and I think he broke 40 bones or something terrible. Um, and I asked them a question after that, like, it's a black, but from a corporate perspective, it's a black swan event, right? It sounds crazy. And my experience in my career, every five to seven years, I've had a black swan event. And I asked them if there were others at HubSpot, and interesting, they didn't have another one, right? But I can think back every four or five years, I can think of one. And I, I, if I wasn't tired, I actually wrote a tweet and I listed all of the black swan events I've had in my career. And they happen somewhat, they're unpredictable, but regularly on the four to six year cadence. And so when, COVID hit and the night came that Santa Clara was shutting everything down and we had to cancel it two days before. The team was beyond upset, right? I mean, I mean the, how, as a leader, right? I mean, just ashen. And um, I was driving and pushing and pushing and we, went, we had to shrink from three days to two days as speakers cancel and we had to do all these things and we were down to like a, an afternoon event. By the end, we had, we had a core group of folks that still wanted to do it and we still would have done it, right? And then the night before, I realized we had to call, we had to call, we had to call foul. Like it was, there was just no more way when this tweet went out that Santa Clara County was prohibiting any gathering, even though there was no COVID really in the U.S. yet. Um, then I realized, and then that minute I'd had black swan events before, right? And I want to give you another story at the end. And I, I went to, you know, Amelia, who you met, who she was tough, our head of, I mean, the team was devastated. And I just, okay, we're, we're done. Let's, we sat down and for five hours until three in the morning, we just planned out our best responses. And the team's better than me and they're great, but I had been through the black swan events. So immediately I went into black swan mode, right? I just, okay, it happened. I was I'm not expecting it to happen, but boom, I know what you do. And you gotta flip the plan and you gotta immediately be a leader and change. And I think if you ask like Puya, who's our number one sales rep, he's closed 28 million. He was, he's here, he's so great. I don't know if he's here right now, but he was just devastated, but he'd worked so hard, right? And he's like, I thought I was a crappy leader, but he's like, you were such a great leader through that because you were just, I don't know how you were so calm, but that's what happens when you've been through a couple, a couple black swan events, right? Um, but related to that, there's an email. If I did, I put it. So I look for them now. And as a leader, as crazy as it sounds, I think you have to look for black swan events. I think you have to look for them because you'll start to see them. And like in January of 2020, the CDC put out an email that said COVID might be an issue for travel. And I, I wish I had it, I put it on the screen, I immediately forwarded it to Amelia and I said, the, my literally email is, this is probably our black swan event this year. Because I knew the signs, I'd felt it before. And every year for Saster, there's some, except for this year, this is our best year in terms of execution, but every other year for eight years, there was a little black swan event for us, right? Something blew up. Um, you know, one year the person that ran it forgot to, um, uh, reserve the venue. That was pretty bad. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Um, even this year, one of the big vendors for us quit three weeks ago. They quit three weeks ago. A key vendor that we've relied on for years, they just quit. They didn't want to do the work. Okay. So those things used to destroy us. We built redundancy. We built resiliency. So the minute that vendor quit after four years, um, Ashley from Montgomery Entertainment Institute, she's one of the best that produced this. She just stepped up and Amelia stepped up and we fixed it, right? It wasn't easy, but kudos to her. And she's not hearing this. Hopefully she sees our, my appreciation in the video. Um, but so now I plan, I plan for them, right? And so I'm not saying you literally have to plan for a snowmobile accident or a pandemic, but you want to think what, what could really, what, what kind of things could screw this company up? What if the, what if the round doesn't happen? What if, um, what if my co-founder quits? Like, like, for example, like someone on your executive team is going to quit that you don't expect. And when I do, 
I don't ask these questions of the CEOs anymore, but I used to in the early days, you watch the videos, I'd always ask, like, was there a great VP that quit on you? And every, everyone has this story. Aaron Levy at Box had this story in one of the interviews I did with him is how their first VP of Eng quit and he thought they would never recover, right? They lost their VP of Eng. He thought the world had ended and it probably had. But, and now I always plan for a VP to leave. <laughs> and, and like, you, you know the ones that won't leave, but even then something could happen, right? Something in their life. And so that's one that every founder should plan for, which is that one of your most trusted teammates for some reason leaves, you lose them. Like it could be a snowmobile accident for HubSpot. It could be a personal issue. It could be a home issue. It could be, you don't realize how stressed they are and they just quit to go on a walkabout. But that's one, if you plan for nothing else, plan on someone, a key right-hand person that you would never think leaving, leave. And so have a calm plan. What would you do if they quit? How would you handle it? Think about it on a walk when you're calm. So then when something like that hits, like, Losing 10 million, like I knew, ex I, mean, I didn't know exactly what to do, but I knew immediately what to do. We called the lawyers, we called the people, we called the vendors. Like the folks that do this AV stuff, this is a million and a half bucks, these lights. So they, the trucks had already started rolling from Texas. We immediately called them and saved about $700,000 because the trucks turned around. Um, I mean, that's a specific example, not to a SaaS company, but think about people black swan events, team black swan events. Don't spend all your time on them, but if you're going to go long, like, you're going to have a snowmobile accident or a global pandemic or friggin' Twin Towers being hit by an airplane. I mean, I've been doing startups long enough to remember the day when the Twin Towers went down, right? And uh, the, too, almost too, too morbid to talk about in the afternoon. I can keep thinking of the 28, 2000. In 2000, I mean, most of you weren't, weren't founders in 2008, 2009. That, that, it was so bad. In 2008 or 9, I can't remember what, I'm sitting at an early SaaS, like, corporate banking event at, like, Pebble Beach on a beautiful day, having wine with like investment bankers or VCs, and I get a call on my phone from, from our bank, Citibank. Greg, my, my banker for years through two thousand, he's like, Greg, how you doing? I'm, I'm, I'm at this event, but I love you. He's like, you gotta pull your money out of Citibank. I'm like, what do you mean? Citibank's the largest bank in the world. He's like, I think tomorrow Citibank's gonna fail. And Citibank, it turned out, almost did fail. Like, Lehman failed. Citibank almost failed. And I'm like, Greg, where do I put my money? Like, do I put it in Silicon Valley Bank? What if they fail? And he didn't know. He's like, at least take half your money out because the, everyone in the office is talking about we're going to do a press release tomorrow that Citibank's going to fail. Now, there was a bailout that night, and Citibank did not fail in the morning. But I'm just rambling through. Like, I, I never as a founder thought my bank my bank guy would call me and tell me to pull my money out. I didn't know where to, I didn't know when one, uh, the banks were closed at 3 p.m. Where am I going to wire out half of my 8 million of venture capital? Like, I, I don't know, but, um, but so I could, I, I could think of more of those. Um, my my co-founder at EchoSign, 10 months in, like my muse walked out the door and never came back. Never came back. I never fully recovered from that, right? Um, and so, anyhow, uh, uh, rambly, but think about those when you're if, you're, if you're going short, don't worry about this stuff. Don't plan around it if you're going short, right? D don't worry. But if you think in terms of a decade like Renee from Build.com, calmly think about what you're going to do when these things happen. And then when, they, when it happens once every five years, you'll like spring, spring into action like I did, right?